just a casual mic mute. No, no big deal. It's just it's to totally planned. Totally planned. Just making sure you guys are paying attention, you know. <laughs> There's probably a little bit more light over here. Friday stream madness. I know, right? I know. This is totally, this is totally not me. <laughs> Perfect excuse to switch off work early too. Oh my! Don't 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 miss out on work for me. <laughs> you gotta make that money. How's the sound now, guys? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Is the music too loud? Too quiet? Feeling any better today? I am. I actually am feeling a bit better today. Thank you for asking. I'm excited. I'm excited for this stream. Because I'm going to try out several new things this stream, and that makes me happy. Karcha, Jeff Leopard, Moose R Rides. What's up, guys? Glad to have you around. The few, the proud, the few random people watching this stream. Glad you guys are around. Mechanisk. That's right. Lot, lots of mechanisk going on here. I got some, some ultramarine stabilizers that I lubed before the stream as well, so you guys don't have to sit there and, and watch me lube them. I also have, if I can find it. Oh, there we go. One of these sweet new mechanisk stickers as well. Love that. Let's see about putting it in my water bottle. What do you guys think? It's like, do I need to do I need to make a shield jug like uh, like the mechs on deck boys? I want to be cool too. Daily reminder to stay hydrated, guys. Been a while since I caught a stream. Glad to have you, Fa. It's been a while since I've seen you around. Probably all cuties too here. Yeah, totally. I mean, everyone here is like... If you're watching this stream, there's a really high chance you're incredibly attractive. Lubed Helios. Yeah, I haven't seen you around for a while either. Glad you guys came back. I love my 2019 clip up, but really ready to get one of the new ones. Yeah, so I have, oh man, I have a couple clip up here. So the one we're actually going to be building today is the, like the, the higher end clip up, I guess you might say. Um, this is the, uh, the not tray mount one. This is actually kind of a, a sandwich mount or bottom mount, I guess rather is, is more proper. But I do have one of the, uh, the round four on hand as well that I recently got in ultramarine colorway, um, removable center posts, foam, the works. I'm beautiful, God damn it! You you certainly are. I'm saying it, man. I I'm telling you guys. So, if you guys are watching the stream, you're probably very attractive. It's just it's st statistically proven. You see a desk mat? Yes, yes. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be showing off GMK Cafe in all of its glory today as well, which is amazing, courtesy of Langlandia because he is just the nicest guy to ever exist of all time. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking in, breaking in this new cafe desk mat, which is glorious. I love this design. And then uh, lots of cafe to come. That's going to be the set that's going to be going on this. Because I think it'll be a perfect match. So you guys won't be able to vote on what key set I'm using, because I'm hell-bent on using GMK Cafe for this. However, you will get to choose a couple other things throughout the stream. So you guys are going to be, you're going to be planning my destiny a little bit here as well. But we'll cross that bridge once we come to it. I don't know what's cuter, you or that ca cafe, Matt. Uh, I think you're cuter, Osiris. How about that? 
You ever thought about that? What's the difference between tray mount and bottom mount? Uh, I will show you, actually. Ask me again when I'm uh, assembling the board. Or when I'm opening the board. Either way. And I can, uh, I can show you in real time. I can even compare the two in real time. My Ultramarine Clip of 4 may be my favorite board, honestly. It's just that good. Yeah, the Ultramarine. Actually, let me let me bust out the, the Clip of Round 4 so I can show off the Ultramarine colorway. Because I feel like Mechanisk products don't really get a lot of stream time. and uh, Which makes me really happy that I'm going to be the one doing a lot of it. At least coming up. The Ultramarine colorway is honestly pretty sexy. My lighting is not that good. That's something I'm hoping to be correcting in the near future, but I'm gonna try to get a good shot of this for you guys. Try to get in some variable lighting here. I really like this. So this is the Ultramarine. It's got the little viewfinder bump-ons. I love those too. It's a really nice touch. The embossed uh, logo back here. Really elegant. And he's got uh, the Mechanisk logo in there. And then the Clippa tray, round four. With the two removable center posts. Very nice. Oh, he sent me a couple foam for this one. Oh, you can just stack them up. I didn't realize that. That makes sense, though. Cool. This is most likely going to be an upcoming giveaway item, guys, so, you know, stick around. Maybe not on this stream. Probably not on this stream. I'll have a, a Google form for it or something. But, yeah, it's going to be a good one. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Just totally whacked my mic. It'll be an extra awesome giveaway, too, courtesy of Mechanisk, of course. Um, because he sent along some other goodies with it, too. So, he did send along an aluminum plate with it. Very nice, as well as one of the uh, the WT60D PCBs, which I know I say it a lot, but it really is one of my favorite PCs. Probably my favorite PCB of all time, um, up till now at least. So, very, very happy. Probably uh, throw in some switches, I'll throw in some uh, Ultramarine stabilizers for whoever wins this giveaway as well. And I'll even offer to build it up. I'll even pay for some switches. And that'll be a fun little giveaway. Because we haven't done enough giveaways lately. And that's that's on me. That's my bad. That blue is nice. Yeah, man. I like it. I made sure your space bars were artisanally warped for you. I haven't even... I took off the plastic wrap of Cafe, but I haven't really taken off uh, much else. I haven't I haven't really looked into it uh, a whole lot yet. I checked out the colors, and then I kind of just repacked it in preparation for the stream. So it'll, it won't be like an entirely new unboxing, but it'll kind of be an unboxing for me. Uh, it's surprisingly green, too. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a, a greenish blue. Hence the, the marine, I suppose. I'm a big fan, though. Hey, Russ. Glad to have you, man. Two layers for soldered PCB, one layer for hot swap. I didn't even think about that. That's that's pretty clever. Yeah. PCB is sexy. Yes. You said the magic word again. Yeah, but no, nobody. Can, the only people that could hear me say the magic word are the people in here right now. So it's not like the giveaway is going to bring in more people. I have nothing to give away this particular stream, anyways. But more giveaway info coming soon. Just join the Discord link below. Kate is not your favorite PCB? Uh, I don't think I've seen the Kate PCB. Can you link me the Kate PCB? Hey, Milk. Thanks for subscribing, man. This asks, what's up, buddy? Uh, just, just doing a fun build stream. I'm looking forward to this one. A lot of cool stuff going on. I got to Dremel one last week. It was all, What did you Dremel? All right, I'm getting linked the Kate PCB. All right, what is this? Well, it's sold out for one, which is kind of unfortunate. 
because it looks good. Okay, so it's another it's another version of the WT60. This is the C version. Let's see. USB-C, cool. RGB LEDs, very cool, like that. I'm just reading this thread here, guys. Give me a sec. Okay, so it's compatible with the unified daughter board. Okay, cool. So it's USB-C, compatible with the daughter board, has RGB. What else does it have going on? Via support. Like seeing that, okay. So it's... It's kind of like the WT60D, but instead of the flex cuts, you get RGB LEDs. So that that's the, I'm a big fan of that as well. That's cool. I personally like the flex cuts just because I like a little bit more flex and a little bit softer of a typing experience. But for seventy dollars, this PCB looks really fantastic. I think the WT60 series that Wilba does is just fantastic in general. Honestly, are these gonna come back in stock soon? I should grab one of these as well. You had to Dremel a WT60. Why did you have to Dremel it? First time on the stream. What's up? Says Tim T. Uh, not much, man. It's just a casual, chill bill stream. That's how I do things. We're checking out some uh, some new stuff today. It's gonna be a good time. I like that the Kate has only seven new bottom row. Yeah, that's a valid reason. I'll be building with seven new bottom row today. Thoughts on silks? Um, I haven't tried them yet. I mean, I've, I haven't tried them in a board yet. Um, today will be my first time, and you guys will get to decide uh, which version I use. As well as which plate material I use as well. Just tuning in, which PCB you're looking at? The WT60... C was the one that we were looking at, but the WT60D uh, is what I'm going to be using today. Yeah, the Weird Flex. I think the Weird Flex is... I think the WT60D and the WT60D Weird Flex are actually the same, except the color is different, and obviously the, uh, the logo is a little different as well. Because it's not a mechanisk PCB, it's it's like more of a, a novel keys thing or, or something else. But I think otherwise it's pretty much the same. USB-C, via support, support for the uh, JST, yeah. I'm just a fan of that line of PCBs, honestly. Do you ever break out the Prime Elise and use it? Uh, I don't own a Prime Elise. I had a Prime E prototype uh, that Holton sent me uh, of Prime KB a, a long time ago. This is, I mean, this was probably over a year ago now, maybe a year and a half. Um, I didn't get to keep it, but he sent it to me to just kind of stream and, and check out and get my thoughts on, and it was, it was a cool board. I'm not the biggest fan of 40s, I gotta admit. But it was pretty nice. Honestly, I really like the yellow silks. I'm guessing that's what's going to be voted for today. But we'll see. We'll see. I'll let you guys decide. What's the difference between Clippa T and S? So T is tray mount and S is more of a, a bottom mount, which uh, we'll be checking out momentarily as I sort of unbox this. I have already unboxed this technically, so um, this is kind of just like more of a pseudo unboxing experience.
Uh, there's another plate and a PCB in here. Got a nice little uh, different mechanic sticker there. I like that. Some Allen wrenches, just in case you need them to uh, to build the board. I shouldn't need those. Thankfully, I'll be using um, one of my drill sets or driver sets rather. There's some bump ons that I, I kind of stuck in there as well. Okay, so this is the Clippa S. There's actually some foam in there too, but we'll take this apart in a second, and I'll show you the guys, show you guys the uh, the parts one by one. Yeah, we got an E white Clippa S here. You can see it's kind of a, a two piece design. Fingerprints all over it already, of course, but a nice little, nice little weight protruding through there. Weight is tasteful. I agree. It's not. It, it's it's very tasteful, right? It's like not overly done. Uh, sorry guys, I'm trying to catch up in chat. There's been quite a few questions. You like Wilba PCBs too, Russ? Heck yeah. I guess it comes down to preference at that point. This hobby is a lot of preference. A lot of preference. Uh, did you mod these silks further? No, no. These are these are straight. These are silks straight from novel keys. I was thinking about filming them, but uh, I've recently learned that uh, the tolerances on these are actually a bit tighter than a lot of the other JWK switches, and because of that, I think I'm going to opt to not film these at the moment. If for some reason I, I decide I need to film them later, I'll just desolder. I have a desoldering gun, easy peasy, and I'll, I'll do what I have to do. But for this particular stream, this is this is going to be more of a test for me. So just to see how I feel about them the way they are. I'd like to I like to get like one point of reference before I start altering things, especially when it's the first time I'm using a product. I'm looking for nice smooth linears that are not creams or inks. What would you recommend that is available right now? Um, well, the new shipment of both Silks and the Unlube series, which are called the Dry series, they have black housings on Novel Keys, uh, should be back in stock relatively soon. I know he has uh, a big shipment on the way. So I would definitely suggest that. But if you're not going to go for that, then pretty much all of the JWK switches are similar enough, and they're all very, very smooth. Just kind of depends on, you know, what color you're looking for and what spring rate, spring weight you're after, rather. And then, I mean, there's always the old fallback uh, of the cheap Gatteron linears, right? It's hard to argue that value. Milky top, black bottom, you get them for like 20-ish cents a piece. Easy peasy. I'm a little worried the foam will block the flex, though. Oh, uh, I mean, you can always remove foam, too. It's not like you need to use foam. Unless it shorts the PCB if you're touching the bottom of the case. I'm going to switch to my purple clipper that I won from Top Clack Raffle Stream just for this. <laughs> nice. Glad you put it to use, man. All right. Shall we shall we break this down, take it apart and get started? I hope you like them stock. I think they're smooth enough, but the sound is really meh. I mean, that's kind of JWK though, right? I, I'm i not really sold on the sound of JWK switches in general. I think all of them sound a little off. Not bad, but just a little off. Even if you film them, even if you lube them, I still don't think they're a particularly amazing sounding switch. Possibly that could change in the future when, uh, you know, maybe some materials get changed, the composition of plastics get changed. I'm not sure. I'm not going to worry too much about the sound, though, at the moment, at least. I'm going to grab so many yellows. Heck yeah. Which W? Which JWK is there for sale at the moment? I have no idea, actually. 
Uh, hopefully someone in chat can help us out there. Do you guys know of any uh, JWK switches that are in stock anywhere? I know Novel Keys has a lot more on the way, but uh, this moment, I'm not 100% sure where in stock JWK linears are. You can buy them on AliExpress. They take a while to deliver. Yeah. Depending on how long they take to deliver, I would just say, like, wait. Wait and get them from Novel Keys. Unless you dislike Novel Keys for some reason, it's usually just better to support vendors within the community. And you can use our promo code ClickClack to get you 5% off. Can I post the link? I don't want to accidentally advertise. Uh, yeah, no. It's an Amazon link? T1's an Amazon. He's looking for uh, linears, though, not tactile switches. Dislike novel keys? I know, right? I don't understand how anyone can dislike novel keys, but hey, he was getting death threats over uh, over keyboards because people were upset they couldn't get any of, any of uh, the keyboards that he had in stock, so... What a world, guys, right? What a time to be alive. Daily Clack has red backs. Okay, well there you go, Daily Clack. I believe that's a that's an Australian uh, vendor, and I've I have not heard of red backs, but I'm assuming that'll be a JWK switch. I use the code to get my WT sixty D. Awesome, awesome. I'm glad I'm glad you guys are using that code. We don't get anything from the code. It's not like uh, an affiliate link, but you guys get a discount, and it shows novel keys that like you might have came there from us or like you were suggested them from us which which does you know help a lot breadback is the aussie word for the black widow spider Oof, that is scary all right guys so we got the the pcb on standby here that's good stuff i'm gonna put a straw poll in chat you guys are gonna decide uh, which plate to use here i have an aluminum one that's already installed in there uh, but he also sent along a polycarbonate one. At least I believe this is polycarbonate. I should probably double check. Pretty sure it was polycarbonate that was offered in the group buy. It doesn't seem like it's acrylic, but I guess I've been fooled before. No, it is in fact polycarbonate. Okay, cool. I'm going to give you guys a straw poll here. Go ahead and vote on this. Let me know what plate material you want to see. I'm leaning more towards polycarbonate myself, but I will defer to chat on this one. And while you guys vote on that, I'm going to get to opening this. Some bump ons for later as well. I might not put those on because I'm. I usually use desk mats and I like to slide my boards around. PC more interesting here. I agree, but hey, if people want to say see aluminum, I'm down for that. It's not like I can't build another configuration of this, so I'm not too worried either way. Will the Clippa S rerun anytime soon? Um, I'm not sure how soon, but I'm pretty sure he is planning to rerun it, yes. He doesn't usually do just single runs of boards, as you guys can probably tell. I mean, the, the tinned, the first round of the tin just ran, and he's already announced that there's going to be another round. <laughs> he's got the tin TKL coming. The Clippa and the Fiel have both had, like, four runs, I think.
Alu is only me, but PC it is. Hey, man, if you like Alu, you like Alu. I don't think there's anything wrong with aluminum plates. I think aluminum plates get a lot of a lot of flack in our community because most people are like, oh, you got to have brass or you got to have polycarbonate or carbon fiber or, you know, now Palm's pretty popular, which I, I, I do love Palm. Um, but, like, it's okay to like aluminum. I think aluminum actually is the best metal plate to use for gasket mount boards. Tight tolerances on uh, on these, which is all right. Nice. Okay. Where's my magnetic tray? I love this thing, man. This is like one of the best, like, six dollars you can spend. Let me know if the music's too loud as well, guys. I feel like I have it up kind of loud, but I don't know what it's like on the stream. Would tactile switches benefit from a poly plate? I have a few builds I want to try, but unsure if that is something worth trying. Most of the combinations are worth trying. You never really know what you like in this hobby until you try it. So, I mean, I, in, in my preference, I would say I tend to prefer tactile switches on slightly firmer typing experiences. So, depending on what the rest of your setup looks like, a poly plate might be too flexy for me. On, um, on tactile switches, but I like, I pretty much like the most flex possible for linear switches. It's just a personal preference. 65% mechanisk board will be insta buy. Nice, nice. Concrete plate. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spam this link one more time, guys. If you haven't voted on which plate I should be using in this build, feel free to do that right now. Uh, reasoning, King Friday, I don't know what you're referring to. Feel free to elaborate, though. Alright. So it looks like we have, this is my first time opening one of these up, so this is kind of uh, as new to me as it is to you guys. But it looks like we have four mounting points, each of the four edges for this plate. Oh, interesting. Okay. I, I didn't actually expect this. This is, this is cool. Come on. Okay, this is, this is interesting. So, plate obviously, mounting points each corner good stuff there but there's also a carbon fiber spacer here and this is pretty uncommon to see a spacer in a bottom mountain board so this is this is something that i know mechanics has been toying with lately and uh, i believe it was originally supposed to make an appearance on the um the tinned I don't, I don't think he followed through with that particular model though but i can't really recall off the top of my head however we're seeing it here and this is this is kind of interesting 
So this spacer should give us uh, potentially a little bit more flex and just maybe a little bit different of a sound signature as well. I have never tried anything like this before, so this is going to be kind of new to me. So hopefully we'll be learning together as we go. Oh, your aluminum comment? Um, so I think aluminum just does a better job of kind of absorbing the sound it doesn't really reflect it back at you quite as uh, viciously as something like steel or brass or, or copper it's a bit softer of a metal right so it, it feels a little bit more absorbent to the uh, the impact and the sound and i don't know for me that like that additional light softness although still retaining a lot of its rigidity works really really well on most gasket mounts in my personal preference and experience but I don't really have like a ton of scientific basis behind that, no. I mean, at the end of the day, it's if you like brass over aluminum, then you're going to like brass over aluminum. All right, let's see the results of the, the plate, guys. What do you guys want to see? <laughs> All right, he overwhelming uh, polycarbonate choice on this. So we're, we're, we're going to start with that then. As you guys wish. Because I don't see that ever going the other way. And once we get to the uh, the switch portion here, in just a few moments, I'll let you guys decide which switches I'm using as well. Is that carbon fiber? Yes. Yes, it is carbon fiber. It's a carbon fiber spacer, I believe, is uh, the correct terminology. How thick is the PC plate? It looks to be the standard 1.5 millimeter. Little, little flexy action. I don't want to break this. I know it probably won't break because polycarbonate is pretty strong, but I hate doing like crazy flex tests because I always get really nervous, really paranoid. But uh, I assure you it is quite flexy. So this is going to be pretty cool. I'm really interested to see how this spacer is going to work and how like what it's going to bring to the party here, especially with a polycarbonate plate. Very cool. So this is going to be interesting. We also have some foam here. Oh, they're, they're serialized. Okay, I like that. I don't know if you know this about me, guys, but I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Huge fan of serialized boards. I, I have this kind of thing for exclusivity, and I, I, I don't try to make a big deal out of it, but when I get a board that has like a serialized badge or something, I I kind of nerd out a little bit. This is This is really cool. I like this a lot. So looks like I got number 22. Very cool. I like that. How common are aluminum plates... Uh, or sorry, how common are aluminum plate builds these days anyways? Seems like people always opt for something else. Probs for a good reason. It's always preference, right? I know, like, I hate using that as a cop-out answer, but, like, it totally is. Just, like, preference. But obviously, as you guys can probably notice, like a lot of the materials kind of come and go in waves too. Like there's there's trends, right? So like brass was like the only choice for a while. Then now like the non-metal plates are starting to become a lot more popular, and now like metal's starting to come back into fashion. And aluminum kind of like was was not really a thing for a while. Like a lot of people just weren't really using aluminum plates for a while, uh, a couple years back. And now like it's starting to come back into fashion now that uh, Key Colt is doing. Some aluminum plates on their builds and stuff. Don't want to make the mistake Anthony did where you assumed it acrylic and snapped it. Oh, I remember that. That was that's rough. I I definitely feel bad. Feel bad about that one. I've definitely snapped acrylic uh, multiple times. I don't know if I've ever done it on stream, and it's always been like my own personal products. But I've I've definitely snapped acrylic. But I mean, acrylic's super cheap, right? That's kind of you get what you pay for there. Want to buy Clippa S 420 or 69? I don't know. Does anybody know how many of these were made? I'd be kind of interested to know. Because I feel like this board kind of flew under the radar. I don't even remember how well it sold. But I don't really hear people talking about it or posting pictures about it. I've, I don't think I've seen a single build stream of a, of a Type S. 
Ali was common in key, court, key cult boards after all. There you go. Key cult's a big name now. Yeah, nothing nothing wrong with um, aluminum plates, honestly. I enjoy aluminum plates. Some of my favorite boards have aluminum plates in them. Copper is coming up. Yeah, copper is starting to get a lot more popular now. I'm waiting for the titanium, <laughs> titanium plate trend. I've heard mixed things about this board. Looking forward to what you think. Uh, what have you heard about this board? I'm kind of curious. If anyone has any thoughts that uh, that they have on this board, I'm definitely all ears. I would imagine that some people... Uh, bottom mount is a little controversial, right? Bottom mount tends to be something that a lot of people are like, oh, it's just not that good. It's not as good as top mount, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, depending on what you're going for, that, that could be very, very true. But I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily rate a board based on mounting style. Um, until I've finished building it and I've actually experienced it. But I, I really doubt I'm going to dislike this board. I hear acoustics are not so good. Could be. We'll have to wait and see. It does come with some foam as well, so we'll give that a try. We can try it with and without it, perhaps. What do you guys think? Should we start with foam in there? Adamantium for me. <laughs> Rubber plates. That'd be that'd be quite something. Start without foam. Alright. We'll uh we'll put the foam aside for now. It's a clipper, but the mounting style is in fact completely different. Big deal for me. Alright. So we'll start without the foam. And uh, we'll throw some stabilizers on the PCB first. Test the PCB, test the stabilizers, then we'll, uh, we'll get to building, guys. I like the uh, the addition of these. I don't know how well you can see them. But there's little um, little kind of uh, pegs here, I guess you call them. That way you can kind of just line them up there. That way this uh, the top doesn't slide all around, you know? Oh, wait. Is this reversible? I don't know which way to go. I think it's the same. Is it the same either way? That would be big brain, right? Okay, that's pretty big brain. Sorry if this is loud, guys. This one even came a little, a little, a little pre-flexed. It's slightly bent, which I'm not going to worry too much about because that'll kind of fix itself in a little bit. Is there really a big difference between top and bottom mount? Intuitively, it seems like they should be similar. Ah. Uh... I, I, is there a huge difference? Maybe not, depending on who you ask, but is there a difference? Yeah, absolutely. Top mount will generally be a little bit flexier, and people tend to prefer the sound, although I'm not going to argue science either way, because I am not an expert in that. I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of people maybe get too elitist when it comes to mounting types. Like, it's okay to have preferences. It's okay to like what you like, but... I get really bummed out when people are like, oh, bottom mount is trash, sandwich mount is trash, tray mount is always trash, and it's like, the boards could still be different, right? Like, not every top mount board is exactly the same. Not every gasket mount board is exactly the same. Don't generalize everything. Cozy Fanatuti, thank you so much for the tier one sub, my friend. Glad to see you around. I don't get why it's called Clippa. Is the shape the exact same? Bottom mount is just a totally different board. Um, I I don't know. I, I don't know why he named it the Clippa. He gave it a different um, sub name at least. So it's the Clippa S versus the Clippa T. So it does have a different distinction, but I don't know. Let's give this PCB a quick test first, shall we?
I'm not going to test all these keys, but... Test a few of them. Does seem to be working. Alright, cool. If I were a good builder, I would test all the keys, but... You know. Who has time for that? You should have time for that. I should have time for that. I do have time for that, but I'm still not going to do it. What's good, Brian? Hey, Chuletas. Glad to see you, man. I feel like in a blind test, I'm going to be able to tell the difference. Oh, between top and bottom mount? I mean, that's that's a fun that's a fun thing to think about, right? Like, having a, having a blind test and having people that really do believe there's you know, monumental differences. See if they can take a blindfolded test and, and depict these differences. I'd be really interested in doing something like that, actually. So the same shape, same design language, basically. Yeah, I mean, it's a fairly simple-looking board, right? Like, there's not a ton of design going on to it um, in terms of the aesthetics. But, like, the Clippo was always supposed to be kind of a, um, you know, like a simple, a simple, like, elegant kind of board. It wasn't supposed to be, like, some crazy out-there design. It was supposed to be a, a slightly more budget-oriented product versus a lot of the, you know, the higher end three, four, five, six hundred dollar keyboards in the market. Pog, I'm finally here at an early time. <laughs> Glad to have you, man. Kind of keyboards, good to see you as well. All right. Let's put some stabilizers in. I am going to be opting for a 7U bottom row here, because that's how I roll. I did lube these before the stream, guys. Let me know if my head starts getting in the way of the camera. I have a tendency to do that. Gets me excited for my own Clippa build. Going Alps route with it. Ooh. What kind of Alps are you going to be using in yours? Wait. SKCL Greens? Did I get that right? Is that what you're going to be using? How do you guys feel about this uh, this stabilizer color too? These are the ultramarine stabilizers. Not too shabby. Light, please. I need to get a better lighting setup. Okay, I'm just not going to be able to show this off very well. So I am going to be opting for a uh, normal backspace versus split backspace because I think both are very valid. 
But darn it, I want to use normal backspace on this, because I think it looks a little bit better sometimes. It's taboo for me not to Bandit Mod anymore, doing it since 2017. Yeah, Bandit Mod was an interesting... I think Band-Aid Mod is valid if you're looking for the quietest board possible. But otherwise, I just don't really feel like it adds anything. SKCL Greens? I was right! I think I remember you bringing that up um, previously on a show. I apologize if you hear dogs barking in the background. My roommate has two dogs. Lost a screw to the carpet gods. I'll have to find that one later. Sometimes you gotta sacrifice a screw though, right? The carpet gods. Sometimes you just gotta sacrifice something to them. I'm trying to source a carbon fiber palm plate for your Alps bill. Nice, nice. A palm plate Alps build. That's something I've definitely never experienced. That sounds like a pretty fun build, though. Time for a metal detector? Nah, here's what you do. I have a magnetic tray. What you do is you just wipe the tray across the ground and eventually it'll get picked up. Big brain. Mega mind level shit, boys. It might be on my chair instead of the ground. Whatever. I'll find that later. Not like I don't have a million of these screws anyways. Alright. Stabilizers in. Time to vote on switches, guys. Let me, uh, let me give you a straw poll real quick. Which which color of novel keys silk should I use? Slash which weighting, obviously. Shout out to Novel Keys for sending these over. And shout out to Leandrin over at Mechanisk for sending over the Clippa S. Pretty good trick. I just cry in the corner and find it 10 minutes later. Fair enough. Now you have no choice, but do you split backspace? No, no, no. I have lots. I have lots. Vacuum will find it next week. No, I'll find it before then. Oh, 
All right, guys, vote on that straw poll. Let's see. Uh, let's see what switches I want to use here. We got the reds, we got the yellows, and we got the blacks. The reds being the lightest of the three, the yellows being the next weight up, and the blacks being the heaviest of the three. Uh, let me get the spring weightings right here. I remember what the yellow is off the top of my head, I think. Okay, yeah, so they're all actually pretty interesting weights. This is something I like a lot about uh, what Novel Keys does um, with the springs they have in stock as well as some of the switches that they stock. So the reds are actually a 55 gram switch, which is pretty cool. 35 gram actuation, 55 bottom out. Um, the yellows are 45 gram actuation, 63.5 gram bottom out, which is which is pretty cool. A lot of people like that 62, 63 and a half gram range. And uh, the blacks are 72 gram bottom outs. These are actually a little bit lighter than uh, a lot of the other kind of quote unquote black switches that you'd find. Same with the reds. So I kind of like that. These are kind of like the pretty light version. And these are the uh, not quite too heavy version. And these are the kind of right in the middle. Gotta get on that Twitch poll game, boyo. I, I'm such a boomer when it comes to Twitch. I need you guys to teach me things. Teach me, senpais. All right, see what you guys are voting for. No, okay, apparently nobody wants reds. One person wants reds, and uh, 20 more do not. So I, don't, I guess we're not using the, the reds. Currently, yellows are leading at 12 votes to 8 votes for the blacks. Make sure you vote, guys. Vote, vote, vote for my Switch Destiny on this build. Hey man, I like reds. I like reds too. I'm not really opposed to any of the, the weights or colors. It's all it's all good to me. I was thinking the blacks would be best like in terms of colors aesthetic. Obviously you're not going to see them once the, ca the caps are on, but you'll know that they're black and they'll match the E-White and GMK Cafe build. Because we're going GMK Cafe on this, boys and girls. The reds will definitely get used, trust me. Would you call the Clippa your favorite budget board? Hmm. That's a good question. I mean, I haven't built the Clippa S yet, but I guess that's more of like a mid-tier board. That's not really like, that's that's definitely a bit more expensive than the, the standard Clippa T. I guess it kind of depends on... Can you give me a price range on what you classify as, like, budget? Because that's that's kind of a, a relative term, right? Some people think, like, a $40 board is a budget board, and some people are happily paying $200 and calling it a budget board. I mean, NK65 entry level, that's like a complete board, almost, uh, for, like, $95 or whatever it is. That's, that's really hard to beat. As far as, like, a, a tray mount case, the Clippa would definitely be my, my favorite budget, yes. But the NK65 is just such good cost, such good value overall. And the NK65 is better value than the Clippa, right? Because a, Cl a Clippa case alone is $120, whereas the NK65, or I think $110 is the, the polycarbonate Clippa. I think that's as low as the Clippa gets for the newest rounds, at least. Whereas the NK65 entry level, which is um, uh, um, an in injection molded polycarbonate, if I'm not mistaken, that starts at $95, and that comes, um, you know, with with your with your plate already there. It comes with your PCB, uh, and it comes with stabilizers, all which the Clippa by default do not. You have to add those on for an additional cost. I guess three hundred dollars for a full build is somewhat budget. Yeah, I mean, once you start adding things like switches and caps, and you know, maybe it doesn't come with a cable, so you get a cable. I, it's, NK65 does, but you know, you get what I'm saying. Like, it starts to add up. But Clippa, yeah, Clippa, great budget, sixty percent. It feels really premium. I like the new round. I think the logo is great. I like the uh, the choice for the removable two posts. There's a polycarbonate version. It's good stuff. But NK65 is pretty pretty tough to beat at $95. And even the aluminum at like $140 or whatever it was is, is also just, just bonkers value. But I gotta be honest, I'm more of a 60% person as opposed to a 65% person. 
which I feel like I'm in the minority now. I feel almost attacked every time I bring up 60%. <laughs> Not really, but... Alright, so we're currently at 13 votes yellows, 9 votes blacks. So I'm going to go ahead and call it there. You guys want to see the yellows more than anything else. We're going yellows. Which I'm okay with. I don't know why I'm doing this. Found an e-white tofu 60 with gat red inks and zeal stabs for 235 shipped. That's That seems really expensive. Is, isn't the tofu like... Tofu's like an $80 case, right? 80 to 90. And Gateron, Gateron Red Inks. I mean, those aren't cheap, but... I don't know, 235 ship seems a little expensive for that. A little bit. We don't need them arrows. We got layers. Yeah, I, I've never really needed dedicated arrows to begin with, which is probably why I don't need a 65%, but a lot of people, they really do need those dedicated arrows. It's just the way it goes. Or you can have a 60% with arrows, Pog. Yeah, but let's be real. The 60% with arrows, just... While it is somewhat functional for a lot of people, it is just atrocious to look at. The layout just looks so unattractive to me. Alright, we're going with the yellows. Let's go ahead and test some of these stabilizers. I'm going to need some caps for that. Can't wait to put this set on the board though. This is gonna be good, good stuff. Sounded good so far. All right. Oof. First time GM cake keycaps. A little bit tight. Check your space bars. I guess there might be some like very very minor warp, but it's it's not that bad. I'm not gonna worry about it. it seemed to work just fine. I'll try them again once uh, we get them in the plate.
All right. Plate. That's what I did. Actually, what I'm going to do real quick. I didn't actually put spacers on these screw in stabilizers. So I'm going to do a quick test just to make sure that uh, they're not shorting, in which case I would have to add spacers, or if I don't have them, I guess a little bit of electrical tape. Should be alright though. Nothing seems to be going crazy, so should be okay. Breathing in water over here, guys. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Set those aside. Let's start configuring this. I'm gonna try to bend back the PCB just a little bit. This one's slightly warped, which is generally fine, but I'm just gonna give it a quick benderoo here. Did Madame Rona visit you? Uh, I don't think so. I've been good so far. I check my, my temperature every, I don't know, three or four days. I've been pretty much steadily at like 97.5, 97.4-ish. So, definitely haven't had a fever yet. Alright, get a little closer here. Silks are very light lubed, won't get that buttery feel for those who want that. Yeah, that's fair. Um, what's actually kind of interesting is, like, for me, I'd probably even prefer them lubed a little bit less. But yeah, if you're going for that, like, full buttery kind of effect, you probably need a little bit more. I'm not sold on uh, needing a full kind of buttery experience. I like my switches to feel like better versions of themselves. Because when you get too much lube on them and they get too buttery, you start to kind of lose a lot of the characteristics that each switch actually has. And a lot of them kind of just start to blend together. Alright, that should be pretty darn workable. I think oils might be best for you, like 105. Hey, 105 is like my favorite lube for switches. All right, being a polycarbonate plate and being quite flexy, um, the first several switches are gonna be a little bit of a pain to get in, but once we get some anchoring switches in here, it should be quite a bit easier. So I am not the only one that hates the feel of a switch being too smooth. There's a difference between smooth and buttery because you don't need a lot of, for most switches, you don't need a lot of lube to make it smooth. You can get it pretty darn smooth with a lot less lube than most people use. They just tend to use more of it anyways. It's easier to get a switch smooth if you just use more lube, but you don't need to use a ton of lube. I have no idea how many switches I have here. 
should be more than enough though. Does polyplate help with tray mount though, XD? Um, it depends on the case. Depends on the sound profile and, and feel you're after. I would say in something like the Clippa T, um, which does have the removable center posts, you can definitely get uh, a lot of flex. I built a Type X, a Mechanisk Type X, uh, without a plate actually, it's just a PCB mount build, but it's a tray mount case, but without the two center posts. There was a fair amount of flex in there. Tray mount no longer means 100% stiff, which I think is pretty awesome. If anyone's wondering what I'm doing with this tool, I'm just kind of providing assistance to the plate up against the switch to make sure they clip in. I'm excited for this build. Clip it to you, has crazy flex. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I haven't built the uh, the round four clip it to yet, but um, I, I completely believe that there's a fair amount of flex there. I think people kind of sleep on stuff like that. They don't really give it enough credit just, you know, because it's a tray mount. They just think it's automatically bad. That's kind of a mindset that a lot of people have just ingrained into themselves and into others in the community, and it's kind of unfortunate. I think tray mounts still play a very important role in our hobby. Not that I think they're like the coup de gras of typing experiences or anything, but. Definitely important. Uh, 876 asking, my good sir, when is the Bluetooth build? Which, uh, which board are you referring to? This is certainly not a Bluetooth PCB. This song's pretty bumping though. Ooh, that one has a pretty a pretty destroyed pin. I'm gonna skip out on that one for now and I'll fix that later. Looks like it's gonna be a good keyboard. I agree. I got this like god what we weeks and weeks ago and I haven't been able to build it until now. Always gonna check your pins before you stick them into the PCB, guys. A lot of the times, switch pins come bent, even if just a little bit. I just got the parts for my first build, says Ricky. Really? Nice. What'd you get? Let us know. First builds are exciting, man. I can't even imagine being new to the community now versus like when I was new to the community because it was such a different such a different time in the hobby. And there was like very, very few options um, when I did my first custom build. So I'm, I'm always curious to know like what people are building these days. Because, I mean, there's obviously just way more to choose from. Tofu 60% kit from KBD Fans and Creams. Nice. I like Creams, honestly. I think they're a good switch. Anybody with Xylance ever notice the stems don't sit straight? All the keycaps sit at a slight angle, front to back. I have not noticed that, no.
In my opinion, inks are a lower pitch than JWKs. Yeah, our community tends to think that, generally speaking, um, deeper sounding switches are better. Um, I also don't want to ruin this uh, desk mat, so I'm actually going to grab um, another mat just to throw on top of it momentarily. There we go. I had to put my, my work mat over it, I guess, so I can do some soldering and such a little bit easier. Not that this is necessarily ruining it, but... Keep this cafe mat in uh, in good shape. Should I, just, should I like artfully set these all around my keyboard? That's what people do, right? In some pictures. That's like, that's a cool thing, right? I'm, I'm artsy now. And by the way, no, I'm not trying to make fun of anyone, except for myself. Because if you can't make fun of yourself, are you really living, guys? Are you really living? Ricky, thank you so much for the tier one sub, my friend. Welcome to the family, the top clack family. Might as well lube Soho's. This is quality lubing entertainment. What are what are Soho's? What is that a new hybrid that I don't know about? We'll go. Uh, we'll go stepped caps lock on this one. You guys don't get to choose that for me. <laughs> Switch Couture JWK Recolor. Okay, so Soho's are a recolor, huh? Okay. I'm going to start building my Switch Couture HHKB while watching this. Been ignoring it for too long. Heck yeah. Build alongside me or lube alongside me. We're in this together. build my imaginary Rukia that hasn't been shipped yet. Pepe hands, huh? Lube alongside me, that's what she said. Oh yeah. You know we're all about the puns on this stream. The innuendos. Really curious about Phoenix switches. My Clarabel. I want my Clarabel to be, to be clicky for the memes. Hmm. 
I have still yet to try the Phoenix stems, but I don't know. I, I feel like that style of Switch just isn't really that interesting to me anymore. I'm, I, I definitely prefer the click bar to the click jacket or uh, Aristotle style. Which I guess is still sort of a click jacket. Holy crap, I am Karcha gifting five tier one subs. Thank you so much, man. That's super kind of you. Super duper kind. Appreciate that, guys. And welcome to you five new subs. Okay, uh, bottom one. I think it's always 70 bottom row. It's always the inside so always the inside um, locations versus the outside locations, I think. It's been a while since I've used a, a universal plate. I could see why, if people thought this board sounded bad, um, it might have something to do with the universal plate. Because universal plates in general tend to not sound the best. I wonder if he actually has plate files released for this, because I'd be really interested in getting something a little bit more custom. With that said, this this could still sound pretty good. We'll see. Again, I'm not convinced that JWK are the best sounding switches to begin with. All right, lots of extras, very nice. Why do you prefer the click bar? I think it, it's just a more consistent, more accurate experience. It doesn't feel rattly. It feels more precise, and I like that. It is a little bit higher pitched sometimes, but that doesn't really bother me. Oh, yeah, that's looking good. All right, I'm going to test to make sure all my switches are straight. Whack myself in the face with it. Very nice. Alright, looking pretty good. I'm going to double check to make sure all my pins are poking through. It's a good habit to get into. It always feels really bad when you get to soldering and like you solder a pin of a switch and then you go to solder the next pin and it's bent so you can't actually solder it. So you have to desolder it, take it out, fix the pin, and put it back in. It's faster just to check them all beforehand in my opinion. You know, just another pro tip from your boy Quakums. <laughs> Alright, looks like we are good. Heat up the old soldering iron here. And hydrate. Let's hydrate together, everyone. Uh, do you worry about crooked switches in this kind of build? I recently did my first soldered board uh, with the same PCB, PCB mount switches and a plate, and the tab still came out a little crooked. Hmm. Interesting. Usually when you have uh, PCB mount switches... And the proper, um, like, hole locations on the PCB for them to be held in place. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't really happen. I mean, universal plate can get a little a little weird, but and not in the tab location. That's that sounds pretty odd. Are you sure you have your switch all the way in to the uh, the plate and PCB? Uh, 
I just want a good clicky switch. Jade slash navy seem to be my only options. I like navies and jades, yeah. They're very assertive. I have box pinks in my uh, M60A, which I really like. Oh, that was loud. Cherry MX Brown's best linear switch. <laughs> oh, you. Just reverse engineer the plate and have it made. Um, I mean, I don't... I don't really need to do that because I would probably just ask him and he'd probably be like, here's the plate file, and I'd be like, cool, thanks. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. Everyone knows cherry switches sound the best. It's, it's preference, but yeah, a lot of people do believe that the cherry housing is the superior housing for acoustics at the very least. Check out NK Sherberts too, yeah. Potentially good clicky option. I feel like the click bar is one of those things where like you either love it or hate it. And there's very little in between. So my head's not getting in the way here. It's another reason why I like building 60%. It feels like it's so much faster than like anything else. Like you go to build like an 1800 or even like a TKL and sometimes it just feels like it's an all day affair. <laughs> I'll check chat in just a moment, guys. I like to finish a row and then kind of interact. I have a system. You need a fan to suck away all that toxic stuff? Oh, you mean my lungs? <laughs> Not for real, yeah. You use a fume extractor or a fan. Don't do not do what I'm doing. I do have a window open next to me. And I, I, I blow the fumes away from me as I'm soldering as well. Which is still not ideal, I know. For beginners, hot swap or solder? Uh, I think hot swap's fine. I don't. I don't think hot swap is as bad as some people think it is. But I mean, I do think soldering is a little bit better if you can do it. I mean, some people can, some people can't, right? Like some people, like literally, can't. Like physically, they have like a, a physical limitation to where they can't solder. Maybe their hands are too shaky, or you know, they don't have quite the uh, the necessary dexterity for it. And then obviously if you're soldering, you usually have to invest in equipment for it. Albeit you can get soldering stuff for relatively cheap. It's still, you know, a cost and you have to decide if you want to invest in something nicer, if you're going to be building more boards, or you know, whatever. Hot swap just, it might not be ideal for everyone, but it removes a lot of the headache for a lot of people. 
I think hot swap is, is certainly a, a valid option. Suttering is pretty easy, though, yeah. It's one of those things where, like, once you do it the first time, you're like, oh, what was I worried about? Two rows down, three to go. Uh, Shaner Insaner donates 200 bits. Thank you so much, man. Says, I gotta go, but thanks for the chill stream. You're welcome. Come back anytime, my friend. My build streams tend to be uh, on the chiller side. If you can't build it with a $20 soldering iron, you don't need to be building it. That's fair. My first soldering setup was like $20 or $25, and that came with like a, a desoldering hand pump. Good old blue, as I like to call it, um, as well as like a little stand for it. I think a couple different soldering tips as well. It was on Amazon. And I built, I built two or three boards with that, and then I realized that I was going to be in the hobby for a long time, and I wanted to invest in some better equipment because I was going to be building you know, do dozens if not hundreds of boards to come, and, you know, I, I have, so. Different strokes, right? Rolling a J has never been this relaxing. I miss your streams, dude. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Juliet has asking, why do you love 60s as much as you do, bro? I just think they're beautiful, man. Like, you get so much symmetry with a 60%, and it's so compact. And obviously, yeah, 65% is not that much bigger. But I just think 65% tend to not look as good. You don't just get the same, you don't get the quite the same symmetry. And I really like that that kind of simplistic symmetry that they really bring it to the, to the party. And plus, like I mentioned earlier, I just, I don't need arrow keys. I don't need dedicated arrow keys. I don't need F keys. I don't need a dedicated nav cluster. I can put anything I want on a layer and I can work with it just fine. So different strokes for different folks again. 
but you know, I just I just think 60 is just the best layout, man. It's the bee's knees. Just joined in, and I have to say this is the nicest 60% PCB on the market. I really like this PCB, yeah. The WT60 series from Wilba is just, just good stuff, man. Whenever I use a Wilba PCB, I know I'm in good hands. Shout out to Wilba, who's probably not watching right now. Are GMK keycaps worth it? Oh boy, is that a discussion. Can you get Wilba on the stream? I I've tried to get Wilba on a stream, but he's usually either too busy or he just doesn't really want to come on. I don't think he's he's really big on, you know, public speaking and appearances. He kind of just likes to, you know, work hard. And uh, he's good at what he does. But I'll ask him again. It's been it's been quite a few months since I last asked him. But there's a few people. There's a few people like that too. Rama is the same way too. I I try to bug Rama at least once or twice a year to come on the show and, and talk to us. But uh, he just he just doesn't like coming on and, and and doing public stuff like that. It's just not his thing, which is understandable. Yeah, not everyone's the same. Uh, did I get in on the Kiwis? I did not. I did not. I honestly do like the look of them, though. And, I mean, it's it's just a recolored T1, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, of course, chat. Always correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I think it's a recolored T1, which I, I'm okay with. And I do think they look nice. I like the Fruit Series uh, lineup, honestly, from TKC. I think they're cool-looking switches. I'm a little bit more interested in some of the ones that are farther out. Like the, uh, was it the, the Dragon Fruit one? And then there was, um... What was the other one? Not the dragon fruit, not the tangy, not the kiwi. There's like a fourth and, and fifth one, right? Tangy housing T1 stem, so not just a recolor T1. Fair enough. I mean, I imagine they'll probably feel pretty good. I should have checked to make sure I have the switches in the bottom row in the right spots before I soldered this. In fact, I'm going to do that real quick. 
it should be good. I'm pretty I'm pretty confident that it's good, but I'm gonna double check just before I saw to the last three. You already know we're gonna we're gonna be using some of these novelties too. Shout out to my boy Lang Langlandia, I love you. Actually, I'll probably go with the bean novelties. All right, so I got the spacing right. Cool. I was pretty sure I did, but sometimes I get paranoid if I think about it. Right. I'm gonna put all these in a bag afterwards anyway, so I'm not too worried about where they go in this tray. The blackberries, is that what it was? Blackberries and dragon fruits? Dragon fruits and blackberries, is that the last two? I think they look cool. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. Alright, we are soldered up buttercup. I'm going to test this before I turn off my soldering iron. Make sure that we are in business, as the kids say. I don't think kids say that. I don't think anyone says that. Except for me. Okay, clear that. Bring that up. Both of these are function. All right, so we are good to go. Everything works, everything registers. It's like I know what I'm doing, guys. I promise I'm not egotistical at all. I totally am. <laughs> I'm feeling good today. Today feels like a good day. Are you guys feeling good as well? It's a little warm in my office. But other than that, I'm feeling pretty good. We're going to set that aside for now. We're going to throw this bad boy together. First, I'm going to get this ugly, ugly soldering mat out of the way. So you guys can have a better look at the cafe mat, which is obviously way, way better. Good to have a soldering mat though. This was just like a cheap cheap one on Amazon that I got, I don't know, five years ago. Uh Mex on deck in the chat. Hey, what's up? What's up, boys? Is that is it Chewy or Osiris on this account? Shit, I didn't realize Chewy was streaming. Is that a bad thing? I like Chewy streams. Turn that off. What keycaps are those? Uh, I'm using GMK Cafe, which you'll get a, a very, a very, um, a way better look at in just a moment when I actually put them on. 
Didn't hurt to double check now versus having to desolder. Yep, exactly. They say in business in The Simpsons. That makes us old. Yeah. I am as old as The Simpsons. Or The Simpsons, rather. Uh, the, I was born in 89, and I believe that's the year that The Simpsons started as well. I love me some Simpsons, though, man. Such a good show. Boomer hours. Yeah, I'm like 31. Someone asked me the other day how old I was, and I was like, am I 30 or 31? <laughs> it feels like I'm starting to forget. What's up, UB? Glad to have you around, man. Hearts to you as well. Uh, Mex on deck asking, when can I take you out on the world's most romantic date? Yes. Enjoy watching my doppelganger stream. I'll never be the Nordic beauty that is Chewy. That is Chewert Little. Hey Chewy, what's your Twitch? He's on it right now. Mechs on deck right there in chat. You can see that. You can go check out his stream. Maybe we'll uh, we'll send the raid party over that way once we're done here. Oh baby, you got an E white clip at S. I'm very jealous. I got HHKB Ultramarine off Mech Market. Oof, nice. Did the Clippa S come in an, in a um, in an Ultramarine HHKB format? Because if so, today I learned. <laughs> oh, a fancy Clippa! Yeah, this is this is a fancy Clippa. I mean, the normal Clippa is pretty awesome too for the price, but uh, this is this is like the fancier Clippa. Oh, we are not streaming tonight. I have a personal account, but I. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you said you were streaming today. You guys crazy. Alright. Well, let's go ahead and get this going, guys. So you guys, uh, you guys suggested no foam first. So we do have some foam for this. Two layers, in fact. They're both pretty thin layers, but two, up to two layers. But we're going to start out by not using the foam. We're going to see where that gets us. i got to remember what are all these... Oh, here we go. Okay. I do like when plates only have four mounting points, though. I don't know why. I like convenience. Oh, made the joke that you are... Oh, okay. That you are me, therefore I am streaming. Wow. Y you got me there. That went right over my head. My brain is very small. Very smooth. Oh, man. How sweet is this looking, though? You get the polycarbonate plate with the carbon fiber spacer under that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this off a little bit more in a second. So I get this screw in here before I put the top on. Not like you'll be able to see it like this when the top's on but isn't that isn't that kind of cool little carbon fiber ring peeking through there there's a spacer i'm a fan <sighs> marty getting hair on it sometimes i wonder if it's worth shaving my beard just for the keyboard community. Just so I can I can have less beard hair on my keyboards. What do you guys think? Oh golly. Lots of questions coming in. I'm going to try to get to those momentarily, guys. I try to get to all the questions. Just give me a moment. Get a couple of these screws in first. Why an acrylic plate and not brass? Uh, this is not acrylic. This is polycarbonate, and brass is not a plate I have for this, nor a plate I really, I really feel I need for this. 
I tend not to care too much about brass plates. If I'm going to use a metal plate, I'll generally opt for something like aluminum. Otherwise, I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of polycarbonate or carbon fiber or uh, palm. All right, so we're going to try this without foam first. Um, and then I'm going to take it apart a little bit, and we're going to add some foam in and see where that gets us. Thankfully, there's not a ton of screws on this build. You only have six for the outside and four for the plate, so it's not terribly lengthy to uh, assemble and disassemble, which I really appreciate. All right. How about that, guys? How about that? How do you decide on how much foam to use? Uh, I don't know. Trial and error, I guess. I don't really have a better answer for that, honestly. Uh, is those switches PCB mounted, or is that a clear plate? Uh, both. Plate is translucent polycarbonate, and switches are indeed PCB mounted. I've just been stuffing all the foam into it and assuming it sounds best that way. I mean, there's different schools of thought. I mean, you have your, your people that are pretty extreme in thinking that if a board has foam in it, or if a board quote-unquote needs foam, then it's not a good board. Um, it's not designed well enough, acoustically at least. Um, I, I don't entirely agree with that, but I mean, I certainly wouldn't argue against it. I think using foam is fine. It's just another modification, right? Like, why lube switches? Makes them better. Switches aren't necessarily bad just because you lube them. Same with stabilizers. Ooh. There's definitely a little bit of flex here. Not a... Uh, that's, okay, that's, that's actually a fair amount of flex. It's not crazy flexy, but... It's, it's more flexy than I was expecting. Nude topless board pick. NSFW. Dude, totally. All right, let's get some caps on this. Shave the beard and the top starts falling out? Oh man, it's probably only a matter of, of years at this point before I, I really start balding. Um, let me start with some accents, I guess. Bear with me, guys. I know I'm super slow at putting keycaps on. It often upsets people. Shaved into a goatee for a few streams? Oh, man, that would look terrible. I just look goofy no matter what I do. I do need, I do need to get a haircut, and I need to trim up the beard a lot, though. It's hard, when it's this long, it gets annoying to, like, wear, um, because, like, I, I wear a mask when I go out, obviously, like, a lot of you guys, um, probably do, and, uh, and should, in my opinion. And, um, like, having, having a beard kind of makes it a little wonky when it starts to get longer, so I need to, I need to trim that back. Alright, good night from the EU boys and girls. Alright, Karcha. Glad to have you, man. Thanks for sticking around. Sleep well. I tried to start a little bit earlier today than I otherwise would have to try to get some of the, the EU peoples around. I probably should have started even earlier, honestly. Oh man, there's, there's some definite flex there.
trick question. You can't be in the keyboard community without a beard. That's... <laughs> that's certainly f seemingly true, at least for, for the gentlemen in the community. Actually, it's starting to sound all right. Uh, I'm gonna opt for. I'm gonna opt for the uh, the barred homing keys. I, I used to be a scooped guy. I used to be a scooped homing keys kind of guy, but I gotta be honest with you, chat. These days, I'm more into the bars or nipples, ideally. If we can get nipples. Shout out to GMK8008. Need more sets with uh, nippled homing keys, honestly. And I only partially mean that as a meme. How's the warp on your 7U? It's honestly not that bad. I can see I can see a little bit of warping. Um, but it, it I mean it seemed to perform just fine, so I'm I'm not gonna worry too much about it at the moment. Feet, Brian? What are you talking about? What feet? Gotta get those... Oh, the bump-ons? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really put bump-ons on a lot of my boards to maybe some people's surprise. I like being able to slide them around on desk mats. Nothing against bump-ons. I do have a lot of boards with bump-ons, but I, just, I don't do it on every build. Plus, they're always way easier to add later on if I want versus taking them off. Do you ever try O-ring gaskets on tray mounts like the regular Clippa? Any opinion on them? Yeah, absolutely. So um, on the uh, the Mechanisk Type X, uh, even it comes it comes with um, these kind of uh, cylindrical gaskets that go over. I don't know if I necessarily call them gaskets, but just cylindrical like kind of um, like bands that go over. And uh, I I'm, I'm a big fan. I definitely think it makes a difference. Where is am I blind? Oh, there it is. I am blind, but that's besides the point. Teha type sweating after realizing he doesn't have a beer. I mean, he must be doing something right, though. <laughs> Do I have to give my keebs back? I shaved everything off of my head except my eyebrows and eyelashes yesterday. Nah, you can stay. You can stay because you were already, you had the facial hair when you came in, right? So you're, you were fine. You were fine. Clay, uh, damage point rather, gifting a tier 1 sub to Pluto. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. Hope you and Pluto are both doing swell at the moment. Well, and always. I just hope you're doing well always. Not just for the moment. Nipples on CRP sets are so nice. I agree, man. I agree. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the nips. Stems look pretty straight on this set. Yeah, hopefully. Um, stepped caps. This set does have stepped caps lock, right? I am blind again. Once again, I'm blind. All right. What do you guys? Uh, what do you guys think on the bottom row? I'm trying to decide which novelties.
To go with the beans? Okay, hold on. Things things are about to get interesting. We might be going with the Rama bean. I'm not 100% positive on the the prepara or the prepare or whatever. I, I'm not French, obviously, as you guys can probably tell. But uh, I, I I'm a big fan of the uh, the uh, the one new Rama novelty in this one. I think it's it's pretty good. I'll set those aside for now. I won't put them on yet, but I'm uh, I'm highly considering, at the very least, the bean. The bean supreme. People always getting me and that clay guy confused. Yeah, I mean, you're both just so wholesome. It's, it's easy to do. I'm only going to grow a beard on my neck for good luck. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a neck beard at the moment, too. Man, cafe looking nice. She's the one that got away. I think it's, I think it's a really nice looking set. I'm a big fan. Beans? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the beans as well. I feel like if I do these uh, these row four one new beans though, I can't do the Rama bean. But if I do the coffee cups, then I can do the Rama bean. But the coffee cup isn't quite as good as the bean, in my opinion. Put these in bags a little bit later. Also, in, a, in, an, in an amazing twist of events, we could opt for the black alphas, ladies and gentlemen. What do you guys think? I think this could be an interesting option as well. Maybe we'll, we'll look at it like this for a little bit, and we'll do a little typing. And then maybe we can decide if we want um, some of that black alpha goodness. Because I, I feel like I don't see very many pictures of people actually using the black alphas, and they might be a little underrated. Maybe a little underrated for me. Not nah, keep the accent keys. I like the accents like this. How do you guys feel about this? The standard alphas, the accents on the escape and enter. Is this is this doing it for you? And then the um, the bean novelties. I'm I'm a fan of this, but I kind of want to check out the uh, the black alphas as well. So uh, if you want to stick around, I might be doing that as well. Is it a metal enter key? Yeah. So both of the uh, the Rama caps that I I were showing off are, are metal. The the prepper are. Preparer, prepare. Um, enter key is metal as well as the uh, the Rama bean novelty. Both metal. Aluminum. Cyber Sam, thank you so much for the sub, man. Appreciate that prime sub. For 26 months, you've been around for a while, my dude. Thank you. Can you put a cup on the C and a bean on the B? <laughs> I mean, I could. Are people doing that? Is that a thing? Is there a mod colored space? I think so. Yes, yes there is. But I gotta be honest with you. Mod colored space doesn't really do it for me. Honestly looks so good like this. Looks clean too. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan.
All right, so we'll, we'll do a little typing test with the foam. Don't forget about the, or sorry, without the foam. Don't forget, we still have the foam, guys. We can, we can try this with foam and see what kind of difference this actually makes. Move the mic a little bit closer for you guys. Wait, what do the metal novelties say? Uh, oh yeah, you are you you uh, you're French, right? I mean, I, I think this one this one might be kind of obvious. I think this one's just prepare, but I'll leave that there for you guys. The other one's just a uh, a fantastic looking bead, which I, I think is a really really nice Rama cap. All right. I've been getting really lucky with space bars lately. I feel like I feel like all of my builds have just had like such a such a precise space bar lately. It, 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 is a, it is a pretty clean sound. I'm not going to say it's amazing, but I, I think the JWK switches, like I mentioned before, I just, I don't think they sound particularly amazing in anything I've tried. Even, like, the really high-end stuff, like the Iron 165s and, uh, and like, Key Cult stuff, I just, I feel like, I feel like JWK just doesn't sound the best. With that said, this is actually sounding better than I was expecting it to. I don't know, I don't know how you can see this, but... There's some definite flex there. It's probably kind of hard to see on camera, honestly. There's not like an insane amount of flex. It's not an IDB60 level of flex, but it's 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 honestly relatively flexy, pretty soft. Too high pitched for my taste. Yeah, totally valid. I agree, JWK sounds bad. I mean, I'm not going to say bad, but I mean, I guess that's kind of what this hobby is, right? It's a lot of splitting hairs. Um, I'm going to put some foam in it, and we're going to see uh, if that makes any any serious changes. Do have some foam. I believe each one of these is 2 millimeter. I think these are, they might be 1.5, but they might be 2 millimeter as well, and there's two of them, so... I could opt for one or I could opt for both. I feel like we might as well go for both and see what happens. Cool thing about this is uh, I won't have to take the caps off to do this. I can quite literally just open this up, pop the foam in, and screw it back together. Hello, Toki. All right, we're gonna we're gonna throw some foam in and see what happens. Could be better, could be worse. Who knows? Super high pitched? Uh, maybe. I mean, huh? I don't know. It doesn't sound that high pitched to me. Like it, it doesn't sound like deep and thocky either. But it's certainly a little bit on the clackier side. I don't know. Maybe it's my mic, because in person it's... I I wouldn't... I would certainly say it's not super high-pitched. But I mean, that's the kind of the thing, right? Things like high-pitched, low-pitched, clacky, thocky, deep... Like, these are all, like, 
terms that people kind of just randomly use in the community and like there's no there's no real way to tell like from one person or another it's like just like smoothness right like some people think like some switches are like super duper smooth but like i don't or you know i guess vice versa in some cases perhaps there's no like regulation on like smoothness or like sound signature I mean, you can quantify it scientifically, of course, but, like, most people aren't going to, like, necessarily know, like, what that means, like, right off the bat, right? Alright, here we go. The top middle screw is a, a, little, a little on the tight side, which is okay. I prefer more thock and a lower pitch, but it's nice. Maybe filming the switches will help. Could be, yeah. I do not have these filmed. Yeah, I mean, it, whatever your preference is, I mean, they're all pretty valid, right? This certainly, this certainly does not upset me. I will say that. But I do think it, it could probably sound better with um, switches that aren't JWK. They feel good though. They feel great. All right. Go ahead and throw this foam in here. Foam is two millimeters thick. Nice, thank you. So we are effectively putting four millimeters of foam in here. Deepest sounding switches? Uh, hmm. I tend to find creams are pretty deep. Some people might argue cherry the all black cherry housings. I I mean like scientifically I don't know like what the, what's the deepest honestly, but I'd probably say one of those two. Gateron inks sound pretty deep. Yeah, a lot of people think Gateron inks are, are very deep too. Personally, I don't find them that deep, but that's just my experience. Topra with SA caps, yeah, that'd be pretty deep. I mean, when you have when you have bigger, like denser and thicker keycaps, you're usually going to get a much deeper, thockier tone. What's the difference between Crytox two hundred five grade zero and Tribasis whatever? Um, I mean, it's just different, different lubes, different viscosities and such. JWK is definitely nice with films for me. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Sir, we're the smooth inspector and your switches didn't pass. <laughs> exactly, right? Like, I... <laughs> that's a lot of the, the, the issues that I've had with uh, vintage blacks in the community. Which is why I'm, like, kind of jaded about vintage blacks. Because, like, there's been... There have been so many times where I've gotten vintage blacks from, from different sources, different people... You know, different boards they were they were pulled from in like different years and like a lot of them were just not very good but people were like oh yeah they're smooth and i always ask like are they smooth and people were like yeah they're super smooth and i get them and they're to me at least they're not smooth at all and it's like there's there's just no regulation on what is and what is not smooth 
people have different opinions on things and you're not always going to be able to see eye to eye. I feel pretty similarly about sound too. But this is also why I don't like uh, typing tests, like watching like YouTube typing tests, because like it's never going to be completely accurate. My recording device, your listening device, you know, possibly multiple layers of compression. Desk mats, room acoustics, like the layout of my office, how many desk mats I'm using, if I'm using a desk mat, bump-ons, the type of keycaps that I'm using, like, everything makes a difference. Like, everything makes a difference. And most people are just like, oh, that sounds bad. And it's like, there's so much more to it than that. <laughs> Alright, so we're foamed up here. typing. Actually, I'm kind of convinced that the, the foam makes it sound a little bit worse. I feel like the foam takes away the sound of like the case and it kind of emphasizes the sound of the switches, um, which I've said multiple times already, I'm not the biggest fan of JWK's sound signature to begin with. And I think this kind of just emphasizes it instead of uh, the case helping with it. This actually sounds higher pitched to me. This sounds clackier to me. Yeah, I, I gotta be honest, I think I think I prefer it without the foam. Yeah, the, the foam also seems to impede the flex a little bit too, which I guess makes sense. I don't know, what do you guys, what do you guys think? Think it sounds better or worse? I think I'm I think I'm leaning towards it doesn't sound quite as good. Did you remember to gasket mount your desk mat? Uh, sadly I did not gasket mount my desk mat. <laughs> I'm liking the extra foam. I can see I can see why some people would like it. Maybe try one piece of foam. Maybe I don't know. I think I I certainly could. I think I'm 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 kind of convinced at this point that without the foam is probably going to be the best. I think it really just the foam emphasizes the switches too much, which these particular switches are not the greatest sounding to my ears. Some cases seem to be better without, tis weird. I mean, preference, right? I've been using cotton as my dampener. I've, I've seen people do that. I've seen people do that. Shelf liner, cotton, sorbethane. I have a bunch of Silverstone silencing foam that I, I used to use. Gasket mouse win. Sheesh, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think I'm gonna take the gasket out. I'll do that. I'll do that off stream so you guys don't have to watch me do that. 
Uh, what do you think about key sets, though, guys? What do you uh, What do you think? You think this is the way to go, or do you do you want to try the black alphas? I feel like not enough people have uh, have been have been showing off the black alphas lately. What do you guys think? Try blackout. You know what they say. Once you go black, you go deaf. Shout out to anyone that gets that reference. Alright, we'll give the black alphas a try. I feel like they could be pretty good. If you don't want to stick around to watch this, I totally understand. But gosh darn it, I'm putting on these black alphas. And then we'll get to use the mod colored space bars like someone suggested before. <laughs> because then it'll be uh, monotone. I think it looks perfect. I really like the way that looks. Yeah. I mean, I think it looks amazing. I honestly do. But. I have to try new things as well. I think Cafe is just a, a really nice and versatile set. But I'm, I'm curious to see what the, uh, the all black looks like. Or black coffee. Whatever, whatever it's called. Black, black coffee. What is this kit called? GMK Cafe Black Alphas. Okay, maybe it doesn't have a, a particular name. Talked about where you got your cable from. Where did I get this cable from? Uh, I'm pretty positive this is a zap cable. Someone got it for me though, as a as a as a present, as a gift. I think I think it was uh, 159 of Project Keyboard. I think he gave it to me as a as a present, but it's it's a zap cable if I'm not mistaken. It's a, it's a Limo too, so it's quick detach, and I have the um, it's USB C on there right now. I have a, a, a USB Mini as well. Just pop that on. I like it for the sake of convenience. I'd like to see black alphas with white mods as a change. Yeah, lighter colored uh, mods tend to not be very popular, but I, I kind of dig it. I'm a, I'm a fan of that kind of difference. Oof. I'm 
I'm liking this already, guys. I'm liking this already. How is your space bar? Just turn on the stream. Uh, the the one that I was using was was fine. There's there's, I guess there's there's a little bit of warp, but it was still very usable, and I didn't really notice it when it was on the board. So for me, definitely a pass. We'll uh, we'll check out this seventy space bar in a moment. this guys I'm, I'm, I'm starting to dig this I think I might like this more <laughs> hi dad hello son how are you doing That reminds me of not drinking coffee today. <laughs> Do you need some coffee, man? You need some coffee? I was thinking about making a cup after the stream. This one seems pretty okay. I don't really notice any warp on this one. So put it on a flat surface. I mean, I guess the edges are just ever so slightly bowed upward, but this one seems even less bent than this one. So, should be fine. about that guys that's pretty nice I know my lighting's terrible I apologize I kind of dig the uh, the all black here I think I think I might prefer this over the standard I definitely think it sounded better without the foam. I think some of the mods sound better with the foam. I think the mods all sound a little bit better with the foam. But the alphas... The alphas sound significantly clackier. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the foam out later. But man, I, I do think this looks pretty darn good. It feels quite nice as well. Yeah, I'm also not a fan of uh, the foam. Two layers of foam at least takes away a fair amount of the flex, which I'm not a fan of. I, I actually kind of was, was surprised at how much flex there was without the foam. Looks a lot better, says Ricky. 
I don't know about a lot better. I think it looks fantastic the way it was before as well, but I think I'm I think I'm sold on these alphas. I like it, but now I feel it lacks contrast overall. That's fair. That is fair. I wonder if I should take the accents off. I kind of want to do... I got I to gotta try this ramen novelty. I just, I just have to. <laughs> Man, me metal keycaps always... <laughs> they always sound so goofy. But man, that does that does look nice. I like that a lot. But if I add this, I have to I think I have to swap this to the normal color. What do you guys think? It looks weird just to have just the enter kind of cream novelty. Silky baby. That's right. Yes, change. Okay. The Rama should I try the Rama Enter? I don't know, the Rama Enter looks like amazing, but I'm not I'm not convinced that it's gonna look I mean, it, the, the font. I'm just, I'm, I think I'm not a fan of the font. I mean, visually it goes with the uh, the escape novelty very well, but I think overall, it doesn't really fit the rest of the set. It's a fantastic looking cap, though. Might just be a little too much for me. What do you guys think? Are the Rama novelties too over the top? I really like the escape one, I gotta be honest. I like the old enter. You want this one? Or should I should I go all like monotone? Or monochrome, rather. Think of that. Is that too boring? Is this too boring for GMK Cafe? Now it reminds me of white on black. <laughs> I mean, that's fair, I suppose. Is it no longer cafe at this point, or is this good or bad, guys? What do you think? Good, bad, eh? Bad? Literally just white on black. <laughs> I think it's a different black. I don't think this is CR. I feel it's lost. It's cafe-ness. Is it, is it just a, a sense of um, maybe having these novelties? Like, is, is it cafe? Is it more cafe if I do this? I really like that novelty, I gotta be honest. Is this more cafe? Does this look better? Or do I need to put the white alphas back on? Or the creamy alphas, I suppose? Looks good. Does look better. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. Good, but I prefer the other alphas. That's valid. I think mo I think most people probably prefer the standard alphas. All dark looks better. All right, all right, interesting. A lot better for the light alphas. We're just chef kiss. Fair enough. Prefer white. It's a different spin on cafe, which is fun and whimsy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone's already done like the, the standard cafe stuff, which I think is is great. It looks amazing, but. I like I like being a little different, you know, because I'm a hipster or whatever. Wait, where the blue cup, Brian? What blue cup? The cup you always drink from? 
I've been uh, I've been rocking um, one of these Bubba water bottles for a while now. It's pink. This is like a knockoff of one of like the really good high end water bottles. This one was only like fifteen dollars, I think. Missed the old gas station cup. Oh, oh, I haven't had that one for a while. I just I got the water bottle and I this is just a little bit more convenient because I can take it places a lot easier. It really just depends if you're not if you are not of white on black already. I I have I have white on black already. So I mean I can only I can totally understand not using it. At the moment it just looks like my E white leaf with a different enter. Yeah, I mean, from the top, I guess it's sort of that way. I think the leaf has uh, rounder edges. Obviously, a different kind of side profile. Different weight, of course. <laughs> nice tofu. <laughs> But more importantly, is that bottle gasketed? Uh, maybe. I don't think so. I think there's a gasket in uh, in this cap. I don't know. It's not a it's not a crazy fancy water bottle. Is that e white alu? Yes, this is aluminum. Aluminum polycarbonate plate. Novel keys, silk yellow switches. And a WT60D PCB rocking at GMK Cafe. I think I'm going to leave it like this for now. But when you guys aren't looking, I'm going to put this novelty back on. <laughs> Only when you guys aren't looking, though. Don't worry. Would it look like a tofu without the seam? I mean, yeah, the, the, the Clippa the clip has never been, like, a crazily designed board with a lot of, like, interesting design work, right? Like, it's it's a fairly standard product that's meant to be, you know, kind of a, a relatively inexpensive board. Is it the exact same dimensions as the Clippa T? Probably not. Um, let me see. I mean, I'm not going to measure anything, but I'll give it the, I'll give it an eye test. I need more desk space, man. I really do. Okay, well as you can as you can see, it's definitely a fair amount um, deeper than the, the standard clippa. And the clippa seems to be a little you can't really see it, but it seems to be uh, just a little bit taller, maybe like 0.5 millimeters, 0.5 to 1 millimeter taller. And the angle definitely looks a little bit, a little bit more on the, the Clippa T as it sticks on my cord. Yeah, so ever so slightly taller for the Clippa T. Definitely uh, a little bit uh, shallower, I guess you could say. It's not quite as large of a board. Deeper. You're right. Hey, Stash. How's it going, man? I'm doing pretty well. Today's a good day. How much is that case? Uh, I actually don't know. I think I think the Clippa S was somewhere around like 2 or 220 starting price. Maybe a little bit more. It's kind of in like that mid-tier range of, of pricing, whereas the, the Clippa T is a little bit closer to the, the entry-level budget category, in my eyes at least.
kind of see it there as well. I'm trying to get it straighter for the camera. I have it lined up on this side. So the, the S is a little bit wider as well. So the S, the S overall is just a larger board than the T, but the T is a little bit taller, and I think it has a slightly more aggressive angle. I think the clip a, the clip a T is like, um, so maybe someone in chat knows off the top of their head. Is it, is it a seven degree angle? Six or seven degree? Whereas this feels a little bit more like, a, I don't know, five or six. The S is a good size. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly not a large board, but I mean, if you're comparing it side by side with the T, the T is a little bit smaller. You excited for the Type X? I have a Type X, and I freaking love that board. I don't even have a plate for it. PCB mounted with a WT60D. There's a decent amount of flex. It sounds good. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice board to take around to because it's not super heavy. But um, <laughs> my girlfriend sold that board. And I haven't gotten it back yet. She's had it for like two months. And I'm like, give me that board back. <laughs> Hopefully, she brings it back uh, tomorrow. <laughs> it's a girl. It's a good good sign when your girlfriend steals it. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. But like, I want to type on it. That's that's the board I have GMK eight zero eight zero zero eight on as well. So like, I haven't been able to use that set on other boards since then. She just like took it and you know, feels bad, man. What's the Clippa X again? So the the Clippa the, the Type X I don't think is actually a part of the Clippa line. It's a, it's a different uh, board, which is it's tray mount like the Clippa X, but it doesn't have it doesn't even have the center post at all. So instead of them being removable, they're just not there, and it has a little bit more design work on the side. Nothing crazy fancy. It was a little bit more expensive than the Clippa too. I think it was like. 150 or 170 as opposed to 110 to 120 but I mean to, to me it looks a little bit nicer it's not quite as heavy I think I, I think the clipper is actually a little bit denser I have a build stream of it I'm pretty sure you guys can check it on the YouTube channel link below you got the gas command one yeah yeah so that's that's another thing on the uh, the type X the type X has um uh, these kind of cylindrical gasket covers, I guess you can call them, over um, the four outside posts. And there are no no posts on the inside, so you get kind of a more of a cushioned, flexy softness. It honestly doesn't even feel like typing on a tray mount to me. When will the clip a T be in stock? I have no idea. Every time he runs around, they sell out like really fast, it seems like. There were extras up on 1UP uh, keyboards, I think, uh, a while back, but I think those all sold out relatively fast. Expect another run, though. I mean, it's it's a fairly popular case for, for the price. Just keep track of uh, of Mechanisk. I think he has a newsletter. I think he has a he has a cool new status page as well. I did say the clip a T is a little taller, but uh, I guess to be fair, this has the uh, the bump ons as well, which are probably close-ish to one millimeter, um, whereas I don't have bump-ons on this at the moment, so I guess that, that height actually might be kind of moot. Regardless, I would certainly say the Clippa T is, is, a, is a smaller board. Alright guys, I'm going to be heading out here fairly soon, so if you have any last minute questions before I take off, let me know. We're going to be uh, rating someone as well, I'm trying to get in the habit of doing that. I'm doing, I'm doing alright at remembering. We're going to see who's online. Do you have a Rama Koyu around? I do not. I have uh, an M60A, which is similar to the Koyu, but it's a 60% version, but I do not have a Koyu.
can you compare this to the M60A? Uh, M60A is is fairly different. It's an integrated plate, and it has a two weight system as well as uh, an internal dampener if you so choose uh, to buy that route. M60A is definitely a, a larger, denser, heavier board. It's also a fair amount more expensive. I think, I think the Koyu definitely has... Uh, I think the Koyu has bigger bezels than the M60. But obviously the bezels are kind of, kind of strange because they're a huge forehead, but it's pretty thin down here. What kind of cable connector is on the top? You mean this, this is a USB-C. Or a Limo. This is a Limo, if that's what you're asking. I'm heavily considered by heavily consider buying one as my main board. Uh, the M60A or the Koyu? This is my clicky board. I think uh, I think integrated plates work pretty well for clicky switches. I want the Koyu, but price is actually too much. Yeah, buying aftermarket boards right now in general is just kind of rough. What is your current current daily driver? I don't really have a daily driver. I switch boards a lot. I've been using, um, I, I'm a pretty big fan of Topra, so I've been using um, this Real Force Round 2 that I got recently. I've been kind of uh, breaking this in a bit. So, I, I mean, for the last, like, week or so, this has been my daily driver. But uh, I'll probably wind up using this for a while now. Usually after I build a board, I use it for a week or two. Do you have a current favorite setup? I sure don't. I know, I know, I know it's a cop-out answer, but I just, I really appreciate variety. There's, like, not really one board I would just, like, like to use for the rest of my life. You know, it's, it's more like, regardless of how much I like a board, I need, like, I change it after a week or two. Just to mix it up. And then I go back to that board and I appreciate it, like, just as much as I did after I built it the first time, you know? But, I mean, I, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a fair amount of keyboards that I swap between. A lot of very nice ones too. So I, I really don't have like a favorite setup. I just like variants. No fair answer. Even if you said one, it changes so often and why I said current. Eh, okay, that's fair. Um I don't know. I've really, I've really been enjoying, like, honestly, I know I, I, you guys are probably sick of seeing Iron 165s at this point, but, like, I really think the Iron 165 is, like, one of, one of the best boards I've ever used. I think the plate design is just so, so good. And plus, it's just, it's just beautiful. Feels good, sounds good. I need to put some tactile switches in here, though. The JWK switches, I feel like, just don't do it justice. The spacebar stab needs a little tune-up as well. I'm going to be rebuilding this soon. I'll do it on stream, of course. But I guess if, if I had to pick a favorite setup right now, it'd probably be the Iron 165 with the, um, I think it's a copper plate. And while I have JWK linears in there right now, I'm going to be putting some tactile switches in there, and I think I might like that a little bit more because uh, if you guys saw on Tuesday, I built a Iron 165 FE with some tactile switches, and I, I really appreciated the way that came out as well. I'm iron. I'm eyeing the Iron 180. You and a lot of other people, I would imagine. <laughs> Do you have a key cold? I don't actually have a key cold. I've built a couple of them, uh, and I've used several of them, but I, I've, I don't actually own one. I do plan to get it on a raffle, though. However, I'm holding out for the key cold number 160, or potentially like a number 260, if that ever becomes a thing. I just like 60 percents, man. I think the 165 is great. I think the, the TKL is great, but I'm a 60% I'm a guy at heart. I'm just holding out for the 60s. The price of the iron is very annoying. 
Uh, you're not the only one that feels that way, I'm sure. <laughs> How many GMK sets you have? I don't know, probably like 15. Number three looks so sexy. I feel like number three is really controversial. Like, I think it looks really good, but I definitely know some people that are not a fan of the new look. Glad to hear you like the copper. I got it for the tinned. Yeah, I mean, so the reason I like the Iron 165 so much is not necessarily just the plate material, because I think, I think copper's fine for it, but... It's just the the thought they put into designing the plate, like the the specific relief cuts, like the science behind the plate. I think is one of the reasons I like that board so so much. It just came out exquisite. Uh, for the tinned, I went with uh, carbon fiber because that's actually the plate material that was um, the board was designed for. Not that I'm sh the copper. I'm sure is going to be good too, but. The tin was, in fact, designed with carbon fiber plate in mind, so I, I went that route. Could the copper cause any ground or shorting issues? Metal can always cause shorting issues, but that's why you don't have stuff that touches them. Like, you, your PCB shouldn't be touching metal. Do you think others will follow suit on the relief studies while designing? Yeah. Yeah. I think some people will. I think some people just don't care enough. Some people don't want to put the effort in, but uh, I think the payoff is huge on the iron. So I wouldn't be surprised to see more of it. I mean, we've had relief cuts for a long time in the community. A lot of people have been doing relief cuts, but I feel like to that it hasn't really been done to that degree until the iron, from what I've seen. Can you force patina to copper? I think so. I imagine you could probably do it just like you, you would with brass. Lots of different methods. I've seen some people use eggs. I've seen some people use vinegar. Saw a guy take a blowtorch to it once. Different ways to do it. You need copper and CF with an extra PCB? Oh, good, good call. Good call. Alright guys, I am going to be heading off for the night. Uh, of course, check below the stream. You can find outlets uh, of various means. Discord, you can come join that. And you can come hang out and talk about uh, your keyboards or you know your favorite cheeses or salsas or video games. or you know, There's something for pretty much everyone there. YouTube channel link below as well. The, uh, the VOD for this will be up tomorrow in about 24 hours because Twitch Terms of Service. So keep an eye on that if you maybe miss some of it. But yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the stream as much as I did. This was this was a lot of fun. I'm I'm glad I'm being able to do builds again because it feels like I haven't really been able to do it in a while, and it feels good to get back in the swing of things. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Who should we raid? Who's online right now? I see Inkebriated's online, which I gotta be honest, I love Inkebriated, but I feel like that uh, that might be a little bit too mature for some people. <laughs> They're a little wild. Oh, Pwade's on the show today. All right. Maybe we got a rating keep rated. Had to pop out for a bit. Did it sound much different with the foam added? I think it does. Yeah. I think it sounds not as good, actually. I think the foam actually makes... I think it makes the mod sound a little bit thockier, which is nice. Uh, I think it makes the alphas actually sound a little bit uh, higher pitched than it was before, which... Um, I wasn't quite as much of a fan of it. I think it sounds fine. I think it sounds it still sounds okay. But I think I definitely preferred it without the foam. So post stream I'm gonna take the foam back out actually. <laughs> Alright guys. Well, I appreciate you hanging out with me. And uh, I'll you know I'll I'll be doing some more build streams in the future. We'll have some, we have some giveaways coming up. I have a few things already set aside for giveaways. So uh, join the Discord, you'll have lots more information there. We always post beforehand in the announcements channel. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and raid and keep raided. Um, this, the stream that we're raiding is uh, sometimes a little bit more mature, I guess you could say. So, um, you know, if you're if you're not a fan of that, then, uh, then definitely don't join the raid. But uh, otherwise, we're going to go check out and keep raided. 
It's a show where they drink alcohol and talk about keyboards, and they have uh, they have a nice guest on today in Puig, who has designed uh, multiple key sets in the community. So we're gonna head over there, guys. All right, queuing that up now, and uh, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. <laughs>